Hi, my name is Dave Greco, and I am art lead at Artcraft Entertainment, uh, currently working on a lot of the concept art. And today I want to go through some of my process while painting the female Templar. Um, as you can see, this is a uh, sped up version of the painting. Um, I generally spend about two days per piece uh, for one of these. And uh, basically this kind of shows really where I go right off the bat. Basically, starting one of these pieces, it's full of panic and fear, like I'm being airdropped into some jungle on an alien planet and I gotta claw my way out to survive. So basically right here, I'm basically just trying to get uh, some really basic shapes and uh, I want like a general idea of maybe the type of feeling and pose for her. And I also wanna get like a good look, base look on her face where it may kind of show some of her personality. I think I remember on this piece that I really started to f get a real feel for the character once I started doing her hair. Um, I felt like that it was a good place where I could really latch onto and then start building the piece outward from it. Um, also, as you can see, that uh, I tend to go from, I jump from piece to piece, or part on a piece to uh, really work it in. So like I'll work on the arms for a little bit, I'll go back to the legs, the breastplate, and the whole piece should be balanced as I continue to work on it. You don't really want to focus on one part of it for too long. Uh, you really want to bounce around. Then when you go back to the face later or to an arm, you kind of have like a fresh look at it. And it really helps a lot. And so usually during this time, I'll start pulling out some highlights. I'll push my darks a little darker. Usually when I'm starting a piece, I like to start really a lot of middle values. I don't ever want to see my highest highlight and my darkest darks for a very long time. It's always kind of in the back of my head while I'm working on the piece, but I want to really wait till I get to it. Um, so right now you can see like the face is pretty washed out. There, some of the shadows in her face are pretty muddy. There's no real highlights in her hair. Um, I still have weird blurry hands or, you know, locked off hands. I haven't taken the time to finish that out yet. So sometimes, let's see here filling in some of the filigree and trying to get a little more detail down before I start bumping out color in uh, some of the shadows. Right now, there's not a heavy sense of lighting direction and where I want the shadows to lay on the piece. I think I get to that in a little bit here. Um, for a lot of the darker blues and shadows, I use a lot of uh, multiply layers. And then I will use, kind of blanket that over the piece and then I'll kind of erase little areas to kind of create the shadow shapes that I want. And I need a lot of moving pieces around. As you can see from this piece, there, I was really unsure of where I wanted to go with the background. Um, first I had a zombie in the background, and then there was a lot of the story about her parents have been, been killed and she's fighting for her parents, you know. And so some of the background I kind of just left a little sloppy because I really didn't know where I want to go with it. I knew I had to focus on it later. So I didn't want to get too distracted with it. So you can see uh, like the brown with that held in these shadows right here is a lot of multiply layers. And uh, I can use that as a quick base and I can still keep color in my shadows. Color in my shadows is really important to me where I never want them to get too gray or too black. Sometimes I'll uh, color select the shadows entirely and drop in more saturated color into them. Uh, feeling really vibrant and colorful in a piece is very important to me. It's uh, a lot of color is what really makes me crazy about piece. Oh, and there we go. I guess uh, kind of shoots right to the end, but it was really just a lot of that polish over and over. Thank you very much for watching.